May God bless you all. We are about to receive the word of God. Open your heart. God is about to do something you will marvel with. God is about to give you a breakthrough. Uh, we've got Apostle Malindis Melane all the way from Ewick Bank, anointed woman of God. She's going to come forward and uh, give us the message for this day. Shall we clap for the Lord until she comes to the podium? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, let me take this time to greet the leadership of this house in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't take it for granted to be standing here today. Thank you so much, Mama, for allowing a person that you don't even know to come in and stand and speak a word. Amen. To Reverend Majala, I appreciate the invitation. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I greet uh, the members in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All the stakeholders, the community at large, in Jesus' name. Amen. I am standing here by God's grace. Begulula Ogoto Reverend Magezwa about the passing of my father. We say, Ati, we will get another person. But uh, God be God, I believe he has allowed me to stand here today. And it is by grace. You know, I'm sitting there. And I'm thinking, uh, this is the first time standing in front of people to preach after I buried my dad. So I trust God with every fiber of my being that what he has laid in my heart will be communicated today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's open the word of God in the book of Exodus chapter 3, amen. Father, we pray that you bless the reading of your word. Your word is alive, your word is active. Your word is sharper than any double-edged sword. Your word is a lamp to our feet. We depend on you today. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray that you speak through me. Spirit of the living God, immerse me in your presence today. We are ready to receive from you. Feed us, my God, in the name of Jesus, for this is our daily bread. This is our food, and we pray that you bless it in Jesus' name. Somebody give God the hand of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 7, and it reads as follows. The Lord said, I have in fact seen the affliction, suffering, desolation of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, oppressors. For I know their pain and suffering. Verse 8, so I have come down to rescue them from the hand power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a land that is good and spacious to a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of plenty, to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hevite, and the Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. Verse 10, therefore come now and I will send you to Pharaoh and then bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Amen. Verse 13, then Moses said to God, behold, when I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father's ancestors has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? 
verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, you shall say this to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. I've already preached, I can sit down. No, no, I can sit down. It is, it is, it is self-explanatory. Amen. Uncle Uncle calls a man by the name of Moses through a burning bush. And he says, I, need, I have an assignment upon your life to go and rescue my people. I got my children, Uti, my people. Because if it was his children only, that means only the Israelites were going to leave Egypt. But when we go through scripture, we understand that other nations followed Israel. And those are the people of God. Amen. But what I want to say before we continue is that this oppression that the children of Israel went through in Egypt was not a surprise to God. Do I have somebody this morning? God wasn't surprised that Israelites are going through an oppression. You know why? Because he prophesied it 400 years before. Amen? Isimo Sako does not shock God. Your situation does not surprise God. Your situation does not move God because if it is your season that you go through it, you're going to go through it. Because it is, it is part of your destiny that you go through what you are going through. But rest assured that the almighty God, the I am who I am, is not shocked and moved that people are leaving you. God almighty, the sovereign God, is not shocked that people are rejecting you. God almighty is not shocked that you are unemployed. He knows the plans he has for you. Your friends, I, the Lord, will make it happen. I don't need. 
need your strength. I don't need your might. I don't need your connections. But when the time is right, I will move on your behalf. When the time is right, I'll get you out of it. When the time is right, I'll heal you. When the time is right, I'll give it to you. I, the Lord, will make it happen. Hallelujah. It is with go, Suti. Go. Hey, I love the Lord. And Moses says, I say. Well, there are situations that make us forget who he is. Isimoziak wens ukoth ukulungu. But the chincha magir. Isime mestaba ngoti seli peswa ko kuno chovo so shala peswa so. It is we we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and therefore our God is indeed a consuming fire. He's here to consume that which was meant to consume you. The word I am. <laughs> Ooh. When I I looked it up in Hebrew. <laughs> I looked it up in Hebrew. The word I am means he does as he pleases. Wenza loga kufunayo maga funu kuwenza Bese logu asazo kuwenza uya kuwenza umasega funu ku I am who I am God was basically saying you see the season is gonna give you Moses at this season the description as a healer I'm going to be whatever they want me to be oh I need somebody hallelujah you see Moses the season is going to give you at this season you go to some faggy box scene you will not put me in a box because I'm too mighty to be boxed so go there and tell them I am who I am and set me I am who I am is walking around your situation he will not just be your healer but he will be your savior he will not just be your savior but he will be your prophet whatever you want him to be I am who I am has come and I need you to tell your situation I am who I am has come to rescue me he has come to my rescue and I'm getting out of the situation so job, what's a job in Agakuluma? What's he? Job 23 is one of the chapters that blesses me because he says, No, 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 I've been looking for this God. Oh, wait, let's remember that Job was a righteous man. Can I, can I say it again? Job was a righteous man. We have this thinking that when we are righteous, we are immune to situations. But the sovereign God, <laughs> because the sovereign God, Reverend Mazala, the sovereign God, we are going to say that this is the sovereign God, we are going to say that this is the sovereign God, with all the qualifications. The sovereign God, we are going to Because he's a sovereign God. The sovereign God is the kind and the type of God that says, Satan, have you considered my servant? The sovereign God is the God that invites the devil into your life. He's the sovereign God. Sometimes he says, go, just test. Sovereign God says, have you considered, Job did nothing wrong. He was tested for doing everything right. Okay, can I speak to someone for a
for a minute. You are not bewitched in the sky. Don't even, don't even try to waste your money, your shawl, or your booze. You are not bewitched. You are part of God's plan. Because Job thought he had it all. But God had something greater for Job. So the sovereign God, because there's no evil in him, he had to allow the evil one to say, okay. In chapter 23, he says, I'm looking for God. My back and my front. I can't. Have you ever prayed and God says nothing? Have you ever sought for God and, and you need a prophetic word and he says nothing? I'm preaching to holy people. I mean, I know how it is like to be fired up and God still says nothing. <laughs> and you pray and you praise and you listen to a sermon and they say, praise your way out and you just say, I lift you higher. You are almighty. You are Yahweh. You are Elohim and he says nothing. And at that time, he trusts you. <laughs> what are you going to do in that season because he has given you a word before put your putting your phone in my right and I, and I look for him on my left and I can't perceive God but he says he knows after he has done testing me after he has done testing me he shall I shall come forth as gold and he knows the way that I take. So that means when you can't feel him, he's the author and the finisher of your faith. He leads you. He, uh, ask yourself, ask yourself this question. Why? When people don't feel God, they go and do other things. But when you haven't done nothing, that is outside the word of God. You know why? He knows the way that you take. He leads us beside the still waters. He is God. Hallelujah. You could have died when. But he kept leading you. Leading you. You could have. Listen. That hospital bed could have killed you. But he said not yet. It's not yet time. And God said. Job says, I want this God. That is why now he says, tell them I am who I am. And I'm here to tell you that we are tapping into a season where you need to know your God. Uh, uh, not, not now. You see, this season at school is not a season to play. Who do men, how do men define me? <laughs> and they say, the prophet. Elijah. They give him all the names. And I'm sure they were so proud of themselves because they thought they had it. And Jesus says, okay, I get that. But who do you say? In your sick bed, who do you say that I am? I need somebody this morning. And in your retrenchment, who do you say that I am? In your family falling apart, who do you say? How do you define me when life is unfavorable to you? Who do you say? You see, we can hear everybody else say, but who do you say? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you because we ought to tap into a season of the spirit. Because, let me tell you, coming here, my flesh did not want to <laughs> because my flesh is still weak <laughs> i've been telling people that i feel heaviness on my legs you know we were we were talking yesterday my we we're having a conversation my mother and my older brother which it's hard sometimes you feel your body closing in on you but the spirit says you are christ the son of the living god i will not let the flesh dictate i want so to define who Christ is, define him from the place of the spirit that I know that my redeemer lives. I may have lost things, but my redeemer lives. People may have left my life, but my redeemer lives. I've been praying and fasting for the promotion, but my redeemer lives. I know, I got to, I'm going 
It's bad, but I know. Hallelujah. I've been oppressed, but I know. I'm coming out of this. Now, yes, I'm reading the verses below. Hallelujah. God says to the people, I know that Pharaoh will, will not just let you go off easily. <laughs> Do I have somebody? But I've already speaking, spoken a word into your life. I am who I am. Has come to take. Because God says, I am taking them to a good land. The land of the Jebusites and the Hittites. But God did not tell them you will still need to fight the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the other ites. But he says, I am taking you. He's not saying you will need your strength to get out. He says, I have come to rescue. I have come to deliver you. But that which oppresses you will not let you go off easily. So when you keep going through the same situation, what do you do? You don't shift from your position. I'm reminded of Elijah when God had spoken that the rain is coming and he has already sent out a word that there is a sound of abundance of rain. Begu Elijah, he goes on his knees. I don't know how he prayed, but if it was in 2023, I can imagine Elijah calling on the rain. Rika Tobo Shenteke Diasad. Yala Brokosaya. Rain from heaven. Fall on us. And he goes out. And the Bible says the servant comes back with a report. And he says there's nothing. And he goes back. Rito Bokoshte de Yasoda. Rika Daba Yasaya. Father, your promises are yes and they are amen. There's nothing too hard for you. And the report still comes. Woo! Woo! I wish I had a church today. The report still comes back. There's nothing. Utu Yasunde is a good mama. Still no promotion. Rika Deba Koto Yosa. I'm not gonna shift from my position. Hela Braka Santele de Boko Dia Sadadaya. I'm standing here until you come through. His head was between the knees. Hela Broko Doya. I'm not gonna shift. Nothing's gonna move me. I'm standing right here. I know that he's gonna come through. I know he's not the son of men to lie. But Sega Mabuza, where is your God? Rika Debroa. Sande Lebro Koto Yosha. Zita Daya Lebro Kosaya. I am made to be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. cloud no cloud and he maintained his position when Pharaoh oppresses you maintain your position when Pharaoh attacks maintain your position hella by your son Hallelujah. The seventh time, he comes with a different report. I remember I was preaching somewhere and I said, Reverend Madlala, that no matter how long it takes, but God will come through. No matter how tough it has been, but God will come through. Hey, I don't know. I mean, it took me.
to Egypt and he presented himself before Pharaoh. This is a word for somebody. And when he presented himself before Pharaoh, Mama Litis will go see, he increased the affliction. This is a word for someone. That the minute you receive a word, opposition will rise. And the opposition rises to take away the word. Because the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the enemy, if he steals the word, he knows that you have nothing to stand on. But when you have the word, you see, Moses kept going back. They were afflicted, but he kept going back. Until Pharaoh said, Israel. This is a word for somebody. God is about to release you, but stand on his word. God's about to bring healing in your family. Stand on. And I, and I can feel it in my heart that somebody has a cry in their hearts for their family. God says he's coming through for your family. His word will never return to him void until it accomplishes that which he has sent it to. I am who I am has sent me. And Sasi Simo Sako, how big it is, but I know how big God is. I am who I am has sent me to you to tell you that I don't have a specific word, but he has sent me to tell you that I am who I am has come into your situation. I don't have a description and a definition, but he is I am in your situation. Whatever you want him to be, whoever he desires to be in your situation, that he is. Are we not serving a mighty God? When he decides to be a mighty warrior, great in battle, he becomes just the mighty. Oh my God, the mighty warrior, great in battle. When he decides to come in as your healer, he comes in as Jehovah Rapha. When he decides to come in as Jehovah as your provider, he comes in and he steps in as Jehovah Child. What a mighty God we serve. coming in. Do not give up. Child of God, don't change your confession. You are going into a good land. When Jesus, when Jesus said, let's cross over, this is one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. When Jesus said, let's cross over to the other side and they get into the boat, it is when it goes in the sea, God boisters us. Because the enemy is comfortable. You see, the devil is okay with you being a church goer. You see, the devil is okay with you being a gossiper. <laughs> the devil is okay with you frustrating people because of your position. The, the devil is okay with you mistreating people who are actually helping you become who you are. He's okay with you being in your mess. Oh, but I am who I am has sent me. Because not only do we need our situations to change, we also need our character to change. You cannot be treating people like they are nothing. You're not going to like me. Uh... But... I am who I am has sent me. <laughs> so the enemy is okay. He, but the minute you decide to change, the sea will get boisterous. The minute you decide to step up, I am sorry, Lala Namudu was in totally promotion. If you want to go to my qualifications, he's going to mess you up. Amen. The minute you decide, hey, I've been treating people bad. Yes, I would see change. He less cut more. I was a part of it. Nagabi. 
the sea gets boisterous. Now the word boisterous means an extreme anger. So the sea gets angry at you changing and crossing over. But baby, you got to cross over. Things ought to change because I am who I am has come into your life. Treat you back your mercy and 
angels. When you walk into your office, just open the Bible. And even if you don't know how to read the word, just say, Lord, your mercy. Your mercy and chores. Your mercy and chores for it. My life will no longer be the same. Your mercy and chores forever. Let's stand on our feet. Let the glory of God supersede human understanding. Hallelujah. We pray for you. Your jobs are not easy. Can I have all the pastors come in front? We are going to pray for your safety as DCS. We are going to pray for God's protection. We are, we are going to pray for God's hand upon your lives because you work in risky environments. And after we have prayed as pastors, I need you to pray for the person next to you. Do I have somebody? And you don't just go hello because the person next to you might be fighting real demons. And sometimes I often say this when I speak in such gatherings that it's not easy to be a leader. You are hated the most, you are criticized the most, but you are anointed for the job. Can I say that again? You go through the most, the most critics, the most hatred, but you are anointed for the job. Because if you were not anointed for it, you wouldn't be here. So I just want us to stretch our hands forth to us. The people of God and we just ask the Lord to be merciful to their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray in your name, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Here are your people, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for each and every one of them, Lord. We are praying for your protection upon their lives. In the name of Jesus, you are God, they are refuge and they are fortress. Even those that were marked to be destroyed this season, Lord, we nullify the plans of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Even those that were marked, oh Lord, to be framed in the name of Jesus so that they get fired, we nullify the plans of the enemy in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray Psalm 91 over their lives, each and every one of them. We pray Psalm 91, mighty God, in their offices, in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word says a thousand may fall in their side and ten thousand in their right hand, but it shall not come near them. Father, we pray and declare your mercy over their lives. Lord, we pray for your protection. Lord, we pray for your hand. Your hand that's not shown to save them. Lord God Almighty, we pray for ideas to improve, mighty God, the correctional facilities. In the name of Jesus, we pray, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, for minds that are of God. We are praying for ideas that are of God. We are praying for strategies that are of God in the name of Jesus. May this institution never Mighty God, correctional center all over the country. We bring them before you. The leaders, we bring them before you. We pray strength. We pray courage. In the name of Jesus, some wake up with heavy hearts. Lord, in the name of Jesus, your burden is light. Your yoke is easy. We declare every yoke lifted in Jesus' name. in their offices and their environment and they did not know how to come out of it oh God but your word says you make a way to escape make a way for them to escape witchcraft make a way for them to escape jealousy make a way for them to escape hatred Jesus. Ela 
Hallelujah. Just if you don't know how to pray, just call mercy and glory. Your mercy, your glory, your mercy, your glory, God. Because you see, I have I have purposed in my heart that I will no longer go anywhere to preach and not ask for prayers. Because people are going through so much. People have no one to talk to. But you, I remember Vasarani. I had, my shoulders were heavy from this, very heavy. And this man of God just out of nowhere came and, and, and let me tell you, Reverend Madala, I was, I was attacked by a girl I was mentoring. So she was sent to kill me. And the Lord showed me in a, in a vision what she had said because we had went to Pretoria to minister there and the Lord showed it to me through a vision so by the time we woke up she was powerless but my shoulders were heavy and this man of God was preaching and he just came he was not even talking to me directly but he just put his hands on my shoulders and I felt the, the heavy weight off my shoulder so by holding somebody's hand you are saying I'm coming and I pray for you you pray for me I love you I need you to survive so by holding your pain and of your heaviness so don't take it for granted don't be cute because you don't know the oppression your neighbor is going through hold 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 your neighbor's hand hold